Here at Geoffrey Parker we have been hand making the world's finest games since 1958 within our English country workshops. We use only the best materials available for our highly skilled craftsmen and women to work on. Our workshops are located in an ancient and pretty part of England in the county of Essex, just one hour north by train from London and 30 minutes south of the Dreaming Spires at Cambridge. Our local town of Saffron Walden was once home to Oliver Cromwell's armies during the Civil War and gets its name from the growing of the crocus to produce the exotic spice of saffron. Lying on the outskirts of the town is the magnificent Jacobean mansion of Audley End. A few minutes away, on the other side of our village of Wimbish, lies the historic town of Thaxted, once home to Gustav Holst, who composed much of the planets there, including I Vow to Thee, My Country. My father Geoffrey was born in Tottenham, North London in 1915. Although excelling in sports at his grammar school, Geoffrey also developed a strong love of literature and a passion for art which took him on to art college and was greatly influenced by Van Gogh. Geoffrey managed to support himself at this time through his painting. His first experience of leather, though, was acting as a manager of a chamois glove factory near the village of Ware in Hertfordshire. At the breakout of war in 1939, Geoffrey was asked to stay to train others for the war effort before leaving to join the RAF. After training in distant California due to the shortage of pilots and planes in Britain, he returned to England to train new recruits himself before being selected to join an elite new squadron called the Pathfinder Force with the dangerous task of marking ahead of the heavy bombers in unarmed lightweight mosquito aeroplanes which use speed and altitude to escape defending fighters. By the end of the war he had been promoted through the ranks to squadron leader and awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. It was at this time he met my mother, Betty, a young WAF officer from Birmingham. In 1944, my mother and father searched for a new home to raise a family and an old dilapidated Tudor farmhouse called Hodges was found in the village of Wimbish. This dated from 1350 and Geoffrey worked for six months to make it a home for his new bride. We still work within the shadow of this magnificent building and I am standing today in the drawing room. Following a brief spell at the Air Ministry in London, working on new projects like Air Sea Rescue while travelling into London on the train laden with eggs, poultry and other country provisions to send in the city, it wasn't long before Geoffrey looked for other sources of income. First he established a pig breeding unit, which at its peak comprised more than 450 Wessex saddlebacks and large white pigs. Combining his love of art and literature, he started to produce a collection of miniature leather-bound books with hand-painted covers. These were sold to tourists and bookshops, museums and luxury stores, one of which was Alfred Dunhill, whose chairman Richard Dunhill asked Geoffrey a question. Can you make a chessboard? Geoffrey and his team, which at the time comprised of my mother and a local schoolboy from Thaxted who would stay with us until his 50s, embarked on designing and making their first chessboard. The skills re required turned out to be something the company now has at its very heart and has become recognised world leaders at. The art of inlaying, cutting and pasting different levers into position to create an intricate mosaic. This standing was confirmed when the company was requested to supply the chessboards and boxes for the most famous chess war championship ever, the Cold War clash between Russia's Boris Spassky and the United States' Bobby Fischer in Reykjavik in 1972. Following this success, our craftsmen and women turned their hands to the ancient game of backgammon. A few years later, our expertise was further confirmed again when the World Backgammon Championship on board the luxury ocean liner, the QE2, demanded 20 competition-sized Geoffrey Parker boards. It was at this time that backgammon guru and world champion Paul McGrail helped us to create our famed weighted leather backgammon stone or checker, which requires painstaking work constructing a papier-mâché former, which is then inserted with a weight and then carefully clad in leather using the exacting skill of fine edging, which by using a special angled knife cuts the leather away to an almost invisible edge. Acknowledging our continued standing at the top of our trade from those early days, again, Geoffrey Parker was requested to supply backgammon boards for the first televised World Backgammon Championship final in Monaco in 2005. What he's thinking is, if I break the eight point, I have some bad numbers. So he's made a very bad technical play here. And he's giving the true odds some chance in a race. 
Soon the news of our expertise spread across the pond to America, and world-famous department store groups clamoured for our games, whilst our midget classic books and growing range of stationery items remained as popular as ever, with great literary institutions such as the Folger Shakespeare and the Pierpont Morgan Libraries, the Art Institute of Chicago and the campus bookshops of Harvard being stockists. Regular attendance to the American Booksellers Convention and the Museum Store Exhibition through the early 80s spread our book work throughout the United States and worked for the Royal Opera House in London and the Metropolitan Opera in New York, from specialist libretti work to our very popular opera journal was just as impressive. It was at this time we were asked to create some special commissions. The first, a blind backgammon for American singing great Stevie Wonder, the first we believe ever made. The Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. honoured us with a commission to recreate George Washington's campaign briefcase for display as the original was too fragile for exhibition. The Royal Vintners Company asked us to recreate two 350-year-old caskets to display their regalia and chains of office. This area of specialist commissions forms at least a third of our work today. At this time, our expertise was sought by the exclusive hotel and club world to design and create luxury menu and wine list covers and room stationery folders. Such great names as the Mandarin Hotel in Hong Kong, to luxury chains such as the Intercontinental Group, and traditional stalwarts such as the Connaught in London. Private members clubs such as the White Elephant, Annabelle's and the RAC in London increased this custom work, while great restaurateurs such as Alain Ducat at his Louis XV restaurant in the Hotel de Paris in Monaco and Raymond Blanc became Geoffrey Parker fans. Trade missions to the Far and Middle East expanded our work in this area. In 1977, we created a special solid silver and gold chess set for Her Majesty the Queen's Silver Jubilee celebrations, winning the coveted Design Council Award in London. This stunning set has recently been reintroduced to our portfolio to great acclaim. At the beginning of the 80s, I forged our first agreement to make under licence a luxury version of the great literary game of Scrabble. Soon a resounding success, its obvious bedfellows as iconic family games followed with Monopoly and Cluedo and 80s classic Trivial Pursuit completing the collection. These additional games soon begged to be bought together and the making of compendia and multi-games tables began to grow. Our ultimate eight-game table was designed and created and is still a popular piece today. From the early days of Dunhill, other great brands sought Geoffrey Parker's expertise to create special collections under their exclusive labels. Asprey Garrard, Tiffany, Cartier, Harrods, Smyson, Davidoff, Chanel, Nima Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, Berdoff Goodman and Barney's New York were a few of the headlining names. Even the chairman of Italian giant Gucci acknowledged that we were the people to make leather games. Quite an achievement for a non-Italian manufacturer. With the United States forming over 50% of our business, I decided to try our hand at retailing and we opened our own store in the Golden Triangle in Beverly Hills in 1988. Eventually though, I had to return to the UK to take up the reins fully from my father, Geoffrey, so that he could retire to resume his painting and other hobbies. During this time, we were commissioned to create a special photograph album for a presentation to Her Majesty the Queen for her 60th birthday in 1986 which was a great honour, and in the following year, we were selected to represent Best of Britain at a trade show in Cologne, where our stand was visited by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. London's exclusive private casinos and gaming clubs saw the potential to reward their high rollers with poker cases and other VIP gifts, and to provide soft gaming requisites, such as backgammon, for their members to play on. Gaming greats such as Aspinall's, Crockford's and the Ritz are among the many who are Geoffrey Parker customers. Soon our work was recognised by the luxury car market and we were asked to make ranges for great marks such as Bentley, Aston Martin, Lagonda and Jaguar. The luxurious Venice Samplon Orient Express train requested travel-sized versions of our large games and private customers commissioned one-off pieces in exotic skins from alligator to ostrich and chagrin set with diamonds and embellished in gold, platinum and silver. The world's most extravagant monopoly set ever made, charting the business success of a great entrepreneur at an alligator and solid gold backgammon for a private jet are just some of the specialist items we have made. On the drawing board is the world's most extravagant poker case ever made. 384 18 carat white gold chips set with over 22,600 precious stones comprising diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, rubies and black diamonds. These will be inlaid with chagrin and secured within a sumptuous suede-lined, diamond-trimmed, hand-bound alligator case. Four gold-plated decks of playing cards will be provided, along with a solid gold dealer and blind buttons, to further impress your fellow players. 
with over a thousand carats of stones and weighing 12 and a half kilos in gold alone, we estimate for a cool 4.4 million pounds, you'll be able to take one home. Of course, we will also be producing less opulent versions for non-billionaires. Formula One impresario Bernie Eccleston was the first purchaser of our iconic multi-game cube, which went on to win British Interior Design Award in 2008 for outstanding design. A range of F1 games was created in Supercar Hyde and F1 World Champion Michael Schumacher ordered 35 backgammons for friends and business associates. Through requests from super yacht owners for games to complement their boats, we became a best-kept secret for interior designers seeking games room requisites for their penthouse suites to grand mansions. Realising that not all of our customers had such deep pockets but were still great admirers of our work, we designed and edited luxury collection entitled Off the Bench, which embraces many features of our more intricate pieces whilst also utilising today's many technological advances such as being able to print on leather. Such items like our James Bond Goldfinger backgammon and our Monaco Monopoly makes for an exciting collection. Our standing has never faltered. Despite many companies cutting corners in recessions or trading down, our policy has been to stick to what we know best, using only the finest materials and the most skilled craftsmen. This has not gone unnoticed, and at the very highest level, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales requested us to make a water snake bull case to present to King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia at the recent G20 summit in London. And in 2011, we were commissioned to produce a unique monopoly featuring the autographs of all the performers at the Rock Gala held at the Royal Albert Hall for the Prince's Trust, which was then auctioned for charity. There are, of course, many more stories to tell since my father started our company in his converted chicken shed back in 1958, but little has changed from his early ethos and ideals. We continue to buck the trend of manufacturing in bulk overseas to achieve a margin. Our strength is within the hands of our craftsmen and women, working closely together as a small team dedicated to produce the very best possible, whether it be for a champion, royalty, a business tycoon, celebrity or just someone who appreciates beautiful pieces. In the spring of 2012, one of my sons, Elliot, joined the company as a third generation Parker and opening a new chapter in our history and is pictured here with my father's self-portrait in the background. Accumulating a wide variety of skills over the years from the making of our games, our customers have asked us to design and manufacture other items for them. For example, bridal hide cases for Glenn Fiddick's record-breaking 110th anniversary whiskey, a 1920s pink martini box for Stolinaya to a special shoe box to present a half a million dollar pair of diamond encrusted shoes for Todd's Parisian Roger Vivier brand. We are also very honoured to be asked to produce by the Royal Mint the presentation cases for the George Medal, Britain's highest civilian award for bravery. Housing a kilo of solid gold, the historic East India Company commissioned us to produce a case for their precious medallions in exotic water snake and traditional bridal hide. Whilst another long established whisky maker, Buchanan's, who supplied whisky to both the royal households of Queen Victoria and King Edward VII, requested two quite different, equally stunning presentations for their delicious cargoes a bridal hide drum and a traditional lid over body suitcase. Further showcasing our craftsmen's many talents, we were commissioned to provide safe stowage for bespoke handmade perfumes destined for Middle Eastern royal palaces. Whilst another backgammon is made for this year's World Backgammon Championships final in Monaco, we are proud to have been made official partners to the World Series of Backgammon in 2011 and more recently at the 2012 London Open Backgammon Championship, we were declared Board Maker of the Year. To celebrate Her Majesty the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, a special limited edition of 25 pieces is being made of a scale model of Buckingham Palace in leather. Measuring over two metres in length, the wings and balcony sections draw open to reveal fine British crystal-cut glass decanters and stemware. On the roof, lined with a printed leather Union Jack, a sterling silver diamond-topped flagpole flying the Royal Standard, allows one to lift the centre section off, which then reveals a full roulette set, complete with chips, layouts and accessories. As the internet opens our previously hidden expertise to a wider audience and large store groups merge with each other to produce much of the same, we are actually optimistic about the future for us and such as ourselves. There will always be people who require something out of the ordinary, and with a dedicated team such as ours, we can produce their heart's desire. I hope you've enjoyed listening to 
a brief history of my family firm.